Thanks for being here. I'm John Nahas, Vice President of Business Development at Ava Labs. Uh, really excited for this chat. And for those of you at home, thank you for tuning in as well. We're joined with Harold Bossi from MasterCard. Harold, if you could introduce yourself to, to the crew. Sure. Hi, everyone. Very nice to be here today. Uh, my name is Harold Boss. Uh, I work for MasterCard, uh, VP of uh, Innovation, responsible for quite a bunch of stuff. Um, what I'll say first is uh, I'll probably talk a lot about my own opinion here, not automatically what MasterCard thinks. That gives me a little bit of freedom. Um, but I will talk also about what MasterCard does at the end of this talk. Great. So what we want to discuss today is what it's going to take to get DeFi mass market appeal, right? So the main question that we have is are we at an inflection point? Right? Where are we in this journey that we are all along to change financial markets, to change the way value is transferred, to, to really utilize and, and kind of fulfill the mission right, of, of crypto and of blockchain? So, Harold, why don't you get started kind of where you see the landscape currently? Well, it's, it's a very vast question, right? But if we all look through the window out there, out there there's a 400 trillion uh, market essentially happening out there, just the economy. Um, blockchain, digital assets, the whole thing there is about four trillion. Right? So what we're talking about is where we've achieved one percent. That's good. That's fantastic. That's in the time span, that's fantastic. It's um, it's definitely not the end, right? Um, it's not the beginning either. It's probably the end of the beginning. Um, it's, it's now time to probably pivot in some places, to do some things that are a little bit different from what we've been doing in the past, right? And I say we because I've been working in this industry for quite a while now as well, as most of you, I'm sure. So you just said something that I feel is, is very important, that we're at the end of the beginning, right? So real quick, show of hands, how many people have been in crypto or involved for over two years? Over five years? Seven years. Great. So, welcome to the end of the beginning. Where do we go from here, right? For some people, I feel like you fe we feel that we've been in this for so long, when in reality, we're just starting to scratch the surface, right? Something that I love to say is, you know maxis exist because we're still so early, right? That we're all kind of fighting over crumbs rather than seeing that 400 trillion pie that Harold just talked about, right? We're still stuck in that smaller mindset of where we were a few years ago and a year ago. And it's growing a lot faster now. So we need to stop looking at the fighting over the crumbs and looking at the little things that we're doing and think bigger, right? So Harold, where do we go from here? Well, I, think, I think you're right. It's about looking at the, at the pie, but not looking at the pie. I, I trust myself, I trust that. It's not about looking at the pie the way it is today. It's about how can we enable the next 200 trillion above and beyond where the pie is today. Right? If we are locked into a situation where we have to compete against incumbents, it's a very red water, very, very difficult place to be, right? regardless of the value and the, and the performance of each actor. Um, I think um, it's much better and it's much easier and it's much more profitable to create value on the top of, above and beyond, in spaces that have not been explored yet. What I'm talking about, if I make a parallel, I like to work with parallel, um, in 2000, and that will show my age, but in the year 2000, there was a, uh, the dot-com bubble, right? The dot-com bubble didn't replace the high street shops. It didn't replace the uh, hypermarkets and supermarkets. It didn't replace that. It just added a number of trillions, a significant number of trillions above, and, uh, above the existing economy. This is what we're talking about here. This is where we're going. This is how we become meaningful in the, in the world tomorrow. What barriers do you think that we have as an industry? And what barriers exist that are stopping us from getting there? Well, the, 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 every industry has quite a few barriers. But I think in the, at the point we are in right now being probably a, a point where we have opened an, op, an opportunity. We have a great opportunity. We're 1%. We're becoming relevant. But we're not major. We're not, we're not huge, right? What do we have to do? We have to, uh, to get to mass market. We have to, access, to get access to these seven billions of people. And we'll never get seven billions of people working on that, although maybe, but, uh, but we have to get into the billions of people talking and, and working and acting within blockchain um, and digital assets. And how do we do that? 
Well, we definitely, the first and I think the biggest barrier to entry at this point is lower, lower the uh, entry barriers, which is uh, the user experience. Right. Can, my, my brother-in-law will hate me for that, but he won't understand what we're doing here. He is, he's great, he's very clever, but honestly, he's got no idea and no interest. Unless I can put in front of him a very pragmatic reason for him to engage, and it's as easy as connecting to Facebook, he's not going to do it. He's going to go and use you know, his current services, be it insurances. We were just uh, hearing about insurances a minute ago. He's going to go to his insurance company and just buy that from there. Why? Why not? Because he's got, he's got a bad experience uh, or he's got a better experience with them right now that he knows. And he doesn't have a matching perfect experience, customer experience in, um, in our world today. You touched on something that's important. And I'm going to take this opportunity to, to let everybody know. You mentioned insurance, and insurance is a very big on-ramp for mass market use cases. So today, uh, Lemonade, if any of you are familiar with Lemonade, it's an insure tech platform out of the U.S. and out of Israel, uh, announced a partnership to build on Avalanche a parametric insurance uh, offering for, for, for crop farmers around the world, right? So aside from mass market, we're starting to see applications at the base layer, reach out to people who are in need, people who before today could not afford insurance, could not get insurance, and not have access to insurance. Blockchain is enabling that by using price feeds, by using data feeds from Chainlink. This is a nice consortium that we've put together. But you touched on something else too, right? It's the barrier of entry. All of us here know how to use a MetaMask wallet, or at least we try to when it's working. Uh, all of us can buy crypto and trade NFTs. But for the average person, that barrier to entry is high. Download a wallet, get a seed phrase, buy some crypto, move it on board, right? I have an unpopular opinion that I think for all of us building all these great things, we're somewhat still pretty elitist, right? We have a high barrier to entry. It's a lot of education that needs to happen. There's a lot of things that need to be done. There's still trust that needs to be built, right? People are still speculating and playing games, right? And until we move past the speculation, to making things easier, faster, and cheaper than what currently exists, we're not going to get there. So Harold, where do you think the, the innovation will start? Like what do you, let me rephrase. We've seen mass market appeal in NFTs and things of that nature, but where do you start to think what industries are ripe for, not disruption, but for updating first? Well, as I mentioned, um Disruption is interesting only if you add value. If you just replace, even with a marginal improvement on, uh, on, the, on the experience or on the value, it's probably going just to be a bloodbath um, on both sides. So I think, uh, the, the, I think there is a couple of industries that are really uh, interesting to explore, like the, the Web3. Right? This is something big. This is, this is Blue Waters. We can go in there and design what we want to design, as long as it is relevant for our target group, our customers. Right? We've got to think about who, is, who are we building for? What are we building and who are we building for? It's more about how do people use it and why do people use it than what it is. Right? It, the what it is behind the scene, at MasterCard we're very conscious of that. People have a card in their pocket and that's fine. It's quite complex behind the scene. We spent years and years and years making sure that it was not complex for them to use it. The complexity is hidden, completely obfuscated. We don't want them to know about it. We don't even want them to, to be conscious of that. We, we just tell them, look, it's as simple as just tapping. Right? Well, I think that's, that's, the, that's a type of goal that we would, would be wise to adopt in our, in our digital assets and blockchain space. So taking a step there, going in that direction, not officially through MasterCard, but where do you see incumbents like MasterCard and similar uh, competitors or people in your space kind of moving into this world, right? Like where is like the low hanging fruit? Where do you see the ability to bring, like to your point, to bring value to the ecosystems rather than adopt blockchain, right? Everyone wants to adopt blockchain. But what, like what innovative things and what ways can you guys kind of add value to this? Well, it's a, it's a great question, I think, because it's about, you know, we, we had um, five years ago, most of the banks, and I'm talking about the financial services primarily, that's where I'm competent, right? Uh, the financial services, most of the banks um, did not really have uh, any opinion 
about blockchain or if it was an opinion that were, they were uh, moderately positive or outright negative. Um, now, I don't, I don't think I know a bank of, of any significant size that doesn't have a blockchain group or a blockchain initiative somewhere, right? It doesn't mean that, to your point, it, it doesn't mean that it's automatically for production. Sometimes it's a little bit for the show. Uh, but slowly this is disappearing. This is really disappearing. There is realization that these technologies are super useful, very, very robust now. Uh, and it has happened in a, in a matter of years, in five years probably, t less than 10 years definitely. And this has, this has landed. This is where we now... Oh, sorry. Is that better here? Thank you. Um, it, it's, it's quite um, interesting to see how the banks are reacting now and moving in that space. MasterCard is helping. Um, we've just, we're, we're on the hiring. We're hiring uh, hundreds of people to help our customers, um, advise our customers on how to adopt those technologies, how to actually transform the way they are doing business to support a better experience for their customers or a better value creation for their customers. So, you know, speaking from personal experience, uh, you know, working with the MasterCard team, Ava Labs is a member of their StartPath program. And, you know, we work with a lot of companies, right? We talk to a lot of companies that want to adopt blockchain or find a use case on blockchain and be part of it. But to, to, to Harold and the team's credit, there's a lot going on behind the scenes and a lot of interest. And the StartPath is, is one of them. And it's a great incubator and accelerator for projects that are building. And the understanding that MasterCard has in this space is, is significant. So it's a testament to, to, to your, your guys' level of innovation and you're embracing the technology, not seeing it as a threat, but actually leaning into it uh, and, and going from there. Um, I know we only have a few more minutes left, but I'd like to get your opinion on kind of where you see mass markets or, the, or, or kind of the, the growth of this in one year to three years. Where do you think we really start to push forward, right? Where, how do we become you know, ubiquitous with the, yeah. with, with, the, with the mobile app. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, 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 I'll take your question, but I'll answer it the other way around. If we want to succeed, we have to probably go 10x in five to 10 years, right? So we've got to go to 40 trillion in maximum of 10 years, I'd say five years, right? And this, why am I saying this is because I believe that uh, loads of our valuations today are based on the principle that there is a future revenue stream, future success, right? So if we continue iterating our way 1% by 1%, so 4 trillion by 4 trillion, like that slowly every, every 7 years, every 10 years, there is going to be a, a challenge in maintaining this, uh, this excitement, this energy that we see here today, right? Um, we, I think there is, a, there is a fantastic opportunity to reach 40 trillion, it's a massive acceleration. The title of this uh, fireside chat is uh, Inflection Point. It has the word Inflection Point. The Inflection Point is not, oh, we're done. It happens now. We, we, can, we can take the back seats and it's all fun. It's about how do we get huge, huge volumes? How do we get the actual mass market, being, being the people, but also the companies, right? Who, who, who funnels people's behavior? So, the question you asked, I wish I would be able to answer it more precisely because I'd be very rich, right? I'd be able to invest in the right places. Um, but my instinct tells me that um, we, we will be there once we have whole segment of the population that refer to a, um, a product, um, a name, as an industry. I'll talk about, for example, um, uh, you know, you, there, there are names of, um, names of product that became uh, synonym to the actual, uh, I'm not going to name anything here, but uh, synonyms to the actual uh, industry, right? And one day, if, uh, if Avalanche is the name that means actually blockchain, well, that's when we reached the, the success. That's where we have mass market. That's where people recognize brand names. That's a sign. That's somewhere where we know now that we can communicate with these, with, with these um, customers and we have a position. I love that. I'd love to see Avalanche as a as a brand name synonymous with blockchains, right? Uh, I think we're all working towards that goal. Um, final question for you. For blockchain to succeed and for mass adoption to happen, to your point of specific apps, right, or killer apps that become well-known, that become synonymous, do blockchains need to be known to be running there? Like, my point is, do you need to know that it's running on a blockchain? 
or is our blockchains going to become or L1s going to become kind of like the telecoms behind the scenes, right? The, like, like your Fedwire and SIPA and SWIFT, the payment rails that nobody knows that run Zelle and PayPal, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, do blockchains need to be known or is it the apps? And if so, what, yeah, I guess that's yeah. all. Awesome. Well, it's, it's a good question because what I think we are going to see is we're going to see those brand names. They have to come up. They have to be visible by the wider population. It might be something like um, a, a killer app powered by blockchain, powered by Avalanche, right? You push that technology in the background because honestly, not many people around the world understand technology, nor do they care about technology. Unlike most of us here, not many people do. Um, but still, they are customers, they are future prospects, right? So if we uh, get to a point where there is a couple of apps that really become mass market, and they are, they, we, can, we can rely on a, a, the knowledge that the industry or the people will understand blockchain is, is robust, blockchain is secure, it's powered by blockchain, therefore you are safe. That would be the ideal scenario. That's how you get to 40 trillion, right? If it's powered by a blockchain, but my God, look at those Bitcoin stuff and it's happening, it's terrible. My nephew lost a Bitcoin over there. This is not what we want in terms of reputation, in terms of uh, mass market adoption. We need to have something that says the technology is robust. And it is. So why can't we, why shouldn't we to communicate about that? I love that. Blockchain will, signifi will, will signify trust, right? Yeah. In the same way people have, you know, see their banks as synonymous with whatever, they'll start to see trust being synonymous with blockchain, blockchain. right? And, and with the technology. Um, I know we're a little bit over. Harold, I want to thank you. I want to thank MasterCard for everything that you're doing and for being such a great partner. Uh, I want to thank everyone here in this room, honestly. You're part you. of this movement as well. You're helping us build and grow. We are growing with you all. Um, thank you for being here. And I'm going to take a second just to thank the best BD team in the business at Avalab. So kudos to the business development team. Uh, we're pushing to try and, a, a, and move this needle forward with all of you and with all of your help. So thank you, Harold. Thank you very much. And thank you, everyone.